Welcome everybody to 2022 San Diego Egg Fest. Yeah. Oh, come, we can do better than do we have heartbeats? How are we doing the Egg Fest? There we go. I don't know about you, but it's been a very long two years. It felt a lot longer than two years and it feels great to actually see smiles, not see masks and be together, gathered, eating delicious food, drinking and so many beautiful people here today. So first off, thank you so much for coming out today. It's truly an honor to be here in San Diego and it is going to be a good time because one of the things I say, good food and laughter. Good food and laughter can pretty much cure everything in my book. Growing up, I come from a huge Jamaican family. I'm one of eight. My mom was one of 13. My dad was one of 10. And we all lived in the tri-state area. I'm talking about 60, 70 cousins, 11, 12 aunts and uncles. And everything was a huge occasion. It could be a 4th of July, and there'd be 200 loud, crazy Jamaicans in the backyard making jerk chicken and snapper and oxtails and curry goat and all that delicious food that is from Jamaica. So both my parents were chefs. Mom was a chef at a nursing home. Dad was a chef at a villa for nuns. So I was always surrounded by good food by them being chefs, me being from a Jamaican family and being in the tri-state area. And the tri-state area, which is New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, is just a plethora of awesome food. So I've just been smitten with great food and an infatuation with great food at a very early age. Uh, started out in hospitality. When I was 13, I was a busboy and I was also room service. So I'm not sure of the legality of a 13 year old serving liquor, but you know, I was enthused by the idea of making 50 to $60 cash at 13 years old. And 60 bucks is what, like two, two gallons of premium in, uh, in California? It's not much right now, but back then in the 90s, it was a lot. And from there, serving, bartending, moved to Atlanta. And I was bartending at the time in 03, just turned 21. And I was trying to think of my next step and I've pretty much done every position in the restaurant industry except for cooking, although I love to cook, just not professionally. And I saw a commercial for Le Cordon Bleu. It said, Le Cordon Bleu, realize your culinary dreams. And I don't know what was about that commercial, the sexy lady's voice, I don't know. But I got up, I went to Le Cordon Bleu and I enrolled that very day. And prior to that, the words Academics, academia, scholar, and David Rose were never in the same sentence ever. But since I love food so much, it didn't feel like work. It didn't feel like school. And this is the part where you applaud. I graduated summa cum laude, top of my class. Very proud moment, very proud moment. And from there, it's just been a roller coaster of a ride. Um, I've worked with Big Green Egg since 2013-14. I've been on Food Network Star, cooked against Bobby Flay. I'm the executive chef and spokesperson. <laughs> Me, Bobby Flay. Executive chef and spokesperson for Omaha Steaks. And I film with Good Morning America, Today's Show, uh, Tamron Hall, Wendy Williams, you name it. And I've met so many amazing people, done so many amazing things, and that's all through that universal love of food. Which leads me to my cookbook, Eggin. David Rose cooks on the Big Green Egg. Does anybody own this book? Shame on all of you. You got books everywhere. So I want to see everybody with the book. I'm doing two demos today. The first demo right here you're salivating over. This is a chili rubbed lamb chop with a mango chutney. So it's kind of, you know, an homage to Jamaican cuisine, you know, sweet and spicy. It has the mango of the tropics and a little bit of heat. And I like heat. I'm all about that spice. And a little more insight as far as the cookbook. Every culture, every country, every region, they have their own style of open fire cooking and barbecue. You could go to you know, Spain, you can go to Jamaica, you can go to uh, Brazil. Every country has their open fire style of cooking and this book pays homage to everything. It met a mixture of food I love, food I grew up on, and food that I just like through travel. So you got soups, salads, entrees, desserts, smoke cocktails because you got to wash it down too right and everything is made on the big green egg and it really is the ultimate grilling experience you can do hot and fast low and slow sweet and savory you name it you guys are here so you already know so before you leave grab a book so enough talking let's get into the food what do you think sound good yeah. all right so what we have here are these beautiful lamb chops right here and that is the finished 
post marinade process. But what we have right here, you have the beautiful rack of lamb. And once you slice off those beautiful chops, you have lollipops right here. This is a nice, probably a double cut one right here. And I think these are great for dinner. They're great for lunch. They're great for parties. No knife and fork needed. Just kind of take it, you bite it, and toss the bone when you're done. And I love them. They're delicious. They're tender. And they take really well to marinate. So first things first, you want to build flavor. You want to kind of build deepness and complexity in flavors and just overall awesomeness. So what you want to do is you want to season the lamb chops. So we use a little bit of salt and pepper which is also one of my favorite R&B slash hip hop groups from the 80s. You might be too young for that right there. Ask mom and dad, they might know. <laughs> then we have a little bit of smoked paprika. Paprika is really great, especially smoked paprika. It gives a nice color to the food and also gives it a really nice smoky kind of flavor. And we are smoking and grilling, so why not use smoked paprika? Kind of goes hand in hand, right? Then we have a little bit of garlic powder little bit of onion powder and you mix all this together now this right here by itself is a is a really good starting point a nice seasoning on there but why make good when you can make awesome right so we're all about building those great flavors one of my favorite condiments to use i put this ish on everything if you go to asian mart or h mart or the Asian aisle in a uh, supermarket, look for Chu Chow chili oil. It is delicious. It's a Chinese chili oil. It has garlic, it has seasonings, it has chilies in there. Not really so much spice, but it is such an umami bomb. It's good for marinades, it's good for soups, it's good for sauces. This right here is a game changer. I have at least three or four recipes in the book for this right here. Once you taste these lamb chops, you will probably buy the book and I know you'll buy at least a bottle or two of this. So the brand is, they're not cutting the check, but I'll still tell you. The brand is Lee Kum Ki Chu Chow Chili Oil. C-H-I-U-C-H-O-W Chili Oil. It is the game changer. And to me, it's what really makes this right here. So I'm gonna take a heavy tablespoon of this. If you like it spicier, feel free to use more. And you see it's kind of chunky. You see the chunks of chili in there and the oil and the garlic, flavor, okay? That's flavor, all right? And then to that, we are going to add garlic, crushed garlic. Garlic is everything. When I hear sauteed garlic or smell sauteed garlic, you know it's about to be some good food being thrown down. So fresh garlic, okay? A little bit of Italian parsley because you want to add some green in there. And green is technically a salad, so if you have the parsley in there, you say, I had my chops and I have my salad. Little salt, little pepper. And you want to thin that out with a little bit of olive oil, okay? All right, so again in here, we have that amazing umami bomb, the chew chow chili oil. We have some fresh garlic, salt, pepper, and Italian parsley. And it's going to look like that. And you want to whisk everything together until it's nice and emulsified. I'm just gonna come around real quick. This is just the marinade, but when you smell it, you already know it's gonna be good. How did that smell? Amazing. All right, now, thank you. Children will always tell you the truth. If it sucks, if they don't like it, they'll say so. So be honest, honest opinion. We haven't even started cooking yet, but how does that smell? Good. So you know it's good. If it was bad, she'd tell me, okay? So we take this right here. And then we're going to toss the lamb chop into all that glorious marinade like so. And you just get everything nice and friendly, get the garlic, get the chili oil, get all those seasonings all together like that. And once you're marinating it, you see that beautiful color from the smoked paprika and the chili oil? That right there is not even cooked, but it looks pretty darn good already, right? So you know when that cooks, it's going to be exceptional. So with me right here, I don't like to rush cooking when I can because you want to let it marinate ideally at least overnight at the very least, two to three hours. But the longer you let this sit, the more that umami, that spice, that flavor is really going to penetrate that lamb chop. Okay? So that's that right there. And you want to have your grill, your egg going at about, you know, 450, 
500 around that for a nice direct heat because the lamb chops cook very quickly and you don't want to overcook these. I would probably suggest against. Well done, a nice medium. It's pretty good, I'd say, for the lamb chops. So literally four or five minutes each side. Nice hard sear on each side. Let them rest, let them hang out, and they're good to go. All right? So I've had these right here marinating since this morning, and they look pretty darn good. Pretty darn good. So I'll be grilling these here in a second. But in the meantime, in between time, I am a fan of sauces. A good sauce can make something truly exceptional. And I wanted to kind of, you know, pay a little homage to Jamaica as well. So whenever you're in Jamaica, you find mangoes very plentiful. First question, Who's been to Jamaica before? Okay, I'm not going to, uh, to, to affect your answer or try to sway any direction, but how is the food in Jamaica? What'd you think when you were there? Okay, what'd you have? You had jerk chicken, you had oxtail, what'd you indulge in? Jerk chicken? Yeah, and with the, f did you have curry goat, oxtails as well? No? Okay. But it's a little spicy, but I like spicy food, but I don't like spicy for the sake of spicy. It's spicy with the purpose, whereas flavor and the jerk chicken, there's also a jerk chicken recipe as well, side note. But in the jerk chicken, you have allspice, you have sugar, you have clove, you have cinnamon in some instances, and it's smoked over pimento, so it's spicy, but it's not going to kill you. So with the sauce I have right here, this is going to be a mango chutney. Is that in back there? Did I lose power? Okay, so we have a mango chutney here. So what we're gonna do here is we have mango, but we're gonna start out with our aromatics. We're gonna have a little bit of oil. We're gonna put that into our pan like so. And we're gonna build flavors. And the spiciness of the lamb chops are gonna go very well with the sweetness of the chutney. All right? So once that gets cranking up right here, to this I'm going to add onions and, there we go. I'm gonna add onions and red pepper. I'm pretty sure everybody has onions and red pepper, thank you sir, in their pantry or in their fridge. So regular onions and red pepper, we're gonna add that to the pan, like so. Get that nice and incorporated right there. And next, I'm going to add my curry powder, okay? So curry powder, it smells amazing, it tastes really good, and it's gonna also give it a real glorious, nice color as well. So with the curry powder, you want to cook that down because you wanna cook all of that spice away and really kind of, you know, reinvigorate those flavors. The last thing you wanna do is cook curry and not cook the curryness out because uncooked curry is very bitter and we don't want bitter because especially with sweet at least not with this dish so when you're cooking the onions and the pepper in that curry powder you're looking to kind of cook that curry down cook out the bitterness but also reinvigorate and reawaken those delicious flavors that is the curry because it's been sitting on that shelf for Lord knows how long. So you want to always toast your spices to reawaken those flavors and those amazing scents as well. Okay, so you let that go for about two, three minutes. Okay, so it's nice and caramelized. Let that do its thing. I'm going to walk over here and see what our egg is looking like. We're almost there. Okay. So we're sauteing this right here. Again, we're cooking down that curry flavor. And once we get that nice and caramelized, about two or three minutes, we want to add our, our mango. Get that nice and going. And we want to add our raisins. Okay, and to this, you want to add also ginger. Ginger is really tasty. Ginger adds a nice other depth of flavor, and you're going to find ginger in a lot of Jamaican food as well. And next, you add vinegar and brown sugar. 
I forgot my vinegar, so don't judge me. So pretend I'm adding vinegar in here right now. Apple cider vinegar works best because the nice kind of fruity flavor of the cider is gonna really kind of complement, also really balance out the sugar. Whenever you're cooking, you wanna always have balance. You wanna have sweet with spicy. You wanna have acidity with sweet. So that way you have a real fatty lamb chop, but you also wanna cut through that fattiness with a little bit of acid. And the apple cider vinegar is gonna do that for you. All right, now essentially all you do when all of that is in the pan like so and everything's incorporated, you just reduce it down to a simmer and it's gonna get nice and jammy and sweet and sticky and sour and just all of the really good adjectives you wanna have when you're making a chutney. Okay, so fast forward, you let all that cool down and when you make it, you want all those flavors to kind of settle and come together because when it's hot, you really can't taste everything going on. But once it cools down, you can really taste the curry, you can taste the sugar, you can taste the apple cider, you can taste the mango, and it's kind of like a jam, like a jammy-like consistency. And this sweet, this sour with the lamb chop, that spiciness, it's really going to hit on all flavors of your palate. So that's the chutney. Everybody see that? That don't look too shabby, does it? Right? And in Jamaica, the group of islands is called the West Indies. So the Indians from India actually brought the curry with them. So you see a huge amount of curry being used in Jamaican food, whether it be through goat, whether it be through beef, whether it be through chicken. And I love Jamaica because it's such a melting pot of great food where we have Chinese, a lot of Chinese immigrants, Indian, English, and we just kind of take from here take from there, kind of borrow and make it our own. And some of the best food in the world. If you've never had Jamaican food before, get you a copy of Egg and Get Working, but go to a restaurant, some of the most glorious food you will ever taste in your entire life. All right, so that's the chutney right there. I guess we'll go ahead and start grilling. So you wanna make sure the grill is nice and hot. I'm right at about 500 right now, that's perfect. Always burp the egg every single time. If you don't know what burping is, it's slowly opening the dome up. You don't want to open it up all at once because you might get backdraft, you might get heat, you might get fire. Quick story, I didn't burp the egg. I used to have a full afro. You know how that story goes. So burp the egg. I'm just saying, don't be a statistic like me. All right? So over to the egg we go. We're going to take our chops. And once you marinate them, you guys kind of want to toss them again together because a lot of times that tastiness might settle on the bottom. And we just go over here and you place them on the egg. Now I will say, cooking is a multi-sensor, sensory experience. You're using your eyes, you're using your taste, you're using sound, you're using your smell as well. So if we don't hear that, that sizzle, it ain't ready because that sizzle is going to give that nice brown that nice sear that we all want on meat. So let's listen, guys. Lawnmower, is it a lawnmower? Turn that lawnmower off, whatever that is. So let's see. I hear that sizzle, can you hear it? It's kind of faint, but can you hear it? It's sizzling, trust me, it's sizzling. All right, we got a lot going on, but we just lay that right on there, right on top. And again, it's gonna go very quickly, about four to five minutes on there. Okay, I'm a Fill that up more with some more lamb chops because I know we're all ready to eat. So again, four to five minutes for a nice medium on there. If you want them more like a, a well done, which I don't recommend, but if you want them more well done or you want them, you know, medium well, go a little longer. I'd probably go probably for that a little lower on the temperature, but this right here is going to get you where you want to go. All right, close that up. All right, so again, four to five minutes each side for a nice medium. We take it off and we're gonna top that with the lamb chutney. So before we finish that off, any questions at this particular juncture? Yes, sir. Correct. Yeah, right, correct. Yes, sir. Because mm -hmm. I wanna get that nice hard sear on there. Um, if you're doing a lot, say you have a huge party, you have an XL or a double XL and you wanna load it up, I'd probably recommend doing it the same 500 but so you're not burning stuff as you're flipping them, because the time you get to the last one, you're gonna probably lose two or three. Probably do that same heat, but do indirect, or do it in smaller batches, and that'll get you right. 
Okay, so we covered the marinade, we covered the chutney, we covered the lamb chops. All we gotta do is wait for that and then serve up some amazingness. So any questions right now about the book, about grilling, about the egg, about my bicep routine, feel free. No questions off limits. I feel like we become friends and we're in the circle of trust now, but feel free. We're coming home right now into home base. So feel free, shout them out, come up, ask me after. I'm here as a vessel of knowledge. How'd it go with Bobby Flay? Huh? How'd it go with Bobby Flay? Okay. Has, um, that's a great question, by the way. Has anybody ever seen the show uh, Food Network Star? Okay, so you know the premise of the show. You have home cooks, you have professional chefs, you have bloggers, and about 13 people were duking it out, tooth and nail, pulling out hair, and just vying to get your own TV show on Food Network. So the judges of the show are Bobby Flay and Giada. So 13 contestants, and I make it all the way to number six. Who's seen the show Beat Bobby Flay? Okay, Beat Bobby Flay. So it was a Beat Bobby Flay themed elimination round. So the whole premise of Beat Bobby Flay is taking your signature dish and cooking against Bobby Flay. Whoever wins stays. Whoever doesn't win goes home. So I've been in Atlanta now for the last 20 years. So I've eaten shrimp and grits about a thousand times and I've made it at least 2,000 times. So I just knew. No way in God's green earth is Bobby Flay going to beat me in shrimp and grits. So it comes to my turn. He says, David, what are you going to make? I say, you know what, Bobby? Put my, put my shoulder like this, my hand like this on his shoulder. I say, you know what, Bobby? Shrimp and grits. And he said, okay, I've made it a time or two, but let's do it. So here we are, Iron Chef Bobby Flay in the kitchen. He's on my left. I'm on his right. And he says, hey, David, can I try some of your food? If Bobby Flay asked to try your food, you better give Bobby Flay some of your food. So I gave him a taste, and he was like, wow, that's really good. I said, thanks, chef. I know. Uh, so I went back to my thing, and he's over here. He's making his food. He said, you want to try mine? I said, okay. I try it. If you see Bobby, don't tell him this. It was all right. It was okay. So I knew I had it in the bag. So it comes time for elimination. I'm feeling myself. I feel like I've lived to fight another day. And they get to me, they say, David, you're going home. My face dropped, it sunk, because I knew my food was better. But if you see Bobby, let him know I'm looking for my rematch. He's ducking and dodging me all the time. But all that to say, in life, sometimes winning, not winning something, you're really winning something. Because I had a chance to gun the show, not be under contract, so all the sponsorships, all the things that followed, Food Network got none of that. So thank you, Food Network. But that was the best thing that ever happened to me. So that's the story about me cooking against Bobby Flay. But Bobby Flay can't make shrimp and grits. Disclaimer. That's all I'm going to say. Don't tell him I said that, but you know. <laughs> all right, so let's see what we got here. All right. So again, you're doing about four to five minutes each side. And you want to flip it over. Oh, yeah. I'm going to show you guys a little bit here. It's looking really, really good right now. And you're looking for those nice char marks. Okay. Looking good. How does it smell, though, guys? How does it smell? Can you smell it? Yeah? All right, don't worry. You'll be eating it soon. You can smell it shortly. But I'm going to show you one right here. All right, so you see that color on there? You got the smoked paprika, got that chili oil on there as well, and you got that nice direct heat. That right there is flavor. Brown is flavor. You know, you want to get that nice brown on there. All right, so we got one side nice and brown. We're gonna give that another five or so minutes. Take it off, and then we'll be eating. All right, looking good, looking good. All righty. Flip that right there. I know you guys can't smell it from where you're at, but it smells amazing. You really smell the garlic and all those herbs and spices. And that with the chutney is going to be killer. It's going to be killer. All right, so now it's my turn to ask questions. Who in the audience considers themselves something of a grill master, grill, you know, daddy, grill mama? And if so, like, what is your claim to fame? You're smiling, so I know you can grill. Are you a, are you a grill master, ma'am? Okay, what's your name, sir? 
Russ, nice to meet you, Russ. Everybody say hi, Russ. Hi. All right, Russ, so your wife, she called you out. She said, you're the cat daddy on the grill. So if I come over to Russ's house, and what's your name, ma'am? Denise. Denise, give it up for Denise. Denise. Everybody say hi, Denise. Woo. All right, so if I come over to Russ and Denise's house, what are you going to make for me that's going to really blow my socks off? Uh, probably, if I can get it, uh -huh. prime rib on the egg. Prime rib on the egg. Okay, so I love prime rib, by the way. Prime, that whole section, you know, uh, ribeye, which we'll be doing at 2 o'clock, prime rib, like, to me, it's the perfect cut of meat where it has that nice fattiness in there, and it just melts and just oozes, and it's just a glorious bite. And if I come to your house on a Christmas or a Thanksgiving, and I don't see prime rib, I'm leaving. I'm just that kind of guy. I'm just that kind of guy. And it means celebration. It means good times. But I digress. How do you make your prime rib, Russ? I follow your recipe that I got two years ago. Oh! <laughs> really? Oh, so it's my, okay, my recipe. All right, you know what? I got to give you a dat for that. So that is, that is now in your repertoire now. It is. There we go. And for those who don't know what Russ is talking about, before all this crazy COVID madness, I was here actually in, was it 2019? The last Egg Fest. And he's referencing a, uh, a chanterelle rubbed prime rib. And I made that with a uh, white Alabama sauce. And Russ, don't lie to the people. How good is that prime rib? Excellent. Excellent. Yes, pun intended. Excellent. And that is actually in the Egg In cookbook here. It's a smoked tomahawk prime rib with chanterelle butter on page 86. And you see how Denise was laughing and smiling and tee hee hee eyeing because she's had that. Page 86. Don't snap no shots. You got to pay for the book. Page 86. That is the prime rib that Russ is talking about, uh, but it's really delicious and uh, it's just amazing. It's an amazing bite. So good job. Good on you, Russ. Good on you. The book is, how much are we? I don't want to say the price and not get it right. Um, I Retail is 25. How much they're selling it for today, I'm not sure, but it should be around that price. But 25, and if you don't get it today, which is fine, you can get it on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, wherever fine books are sold, you can get it. And uh, it's literally my baby. I birthed it from my hands and from my head. And it's not just a food book about grilling. It's a food book for people who love food, where just because it's a big green egg cookbook, you can translate all those recipes into cooking inside the house. <coughs> Traeger. <coughs> If you have that, or Komodo Joe, I don't know who'd be in their right mind to get those. But ideally, you want to do it on a big green egg, but don't feel, you know, ashamed or whatever, sad. All these recipes can translate to inside of the house as well. All right. So let's see what we got here. Pump it up. We're looking good. Looking good, looking good. And you want to give the lamb a chance for all that fat because they are kind of fatty to kind of render down and i'm gonna start just taking off the ones that are pretty done but we're looking good here guys and this right here with the mango chutney it's gonna be so good all right so will we be here till two o'clock because we'll have some ribeye as well so you'll have two opportunities to eat something from the cookbook again. So if you're here, I wouldn't miss it. All right. Looking good, looking good. We're almost there, guys. That don't look too bad, does it? That don't look too bad. I'd eat that. I'd eat that. All right. So I'm going to start taking these off here. And feel free while I'm taking these off the grill, if you want to shout out any more questions, any experiences, any other grill masters in the audience want to share something? Yes, you, sir. I like doing cedar plank. Cedar plank works really good. I think it's just enough wood flavor uh, to not overpower it. I think with uh, the cedar plank, that's really, really good, and maybe a lighter kind of, you know, fruit wood like a cherry or an apple. I want to use anything like oak on it because oak is very powerful. It's great for brisket and ribs, but seafood, seafood is kind of light. So you want to taste the fish, not the smoke. So if you're going to do it, fruit wood, cherry, apple, or maybe a cedar plank, it also retains that moisture on the fish too. Yep. All 
All right, looking good here, guys. Who's ready to eat? 